Denver Tornadoes take on the John Glenn Muskies here in the Division II Regional at the Ohio University Convocation Center in Athens. I'm Scott Robinson along with Judd Compton. And Judd, these two teams very familiar with each other and uh, always it's a good ball game. Well, Eastern Districts have been very close to getting to the Final Four the last few years and John Glenn and Dover are going to try to get over that hump tonight and Dover has to try and figure out that piece as they get ready to go in this regional semi. All right, we'll come back. We'll talk with Dover head coach Bob Von Kennel in a moment. So stay with us here on the Ferris Financial Pregame Show on TV2 Sports. Well, I woke up to the sound of silence and cars were cutting like knives in a fist fight. And I found you with a tear in your eye, your head in the curtains and heart like the 4th of July. You swore and said, we are not, we are not shiny stars. This I know, I never said we are. If you're lost and alone, or you sink you like a stone, carry on. In the nation, it's not always pretty. But add brand new belongings from Nationwide Insurance and we'll replace destroyed or stolen items with brand new versions. We take care of the heat so you don't get burned. Just another way we put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. Tell me, are you confident in your financial game plan? Hello, I'm Matt Ferris, president of Ferris Financial. If you're like most people, you've probably spent a lot of time talking about getting your financial affairs to order, but for some reason, the game plan has never come together. At Ferris Financial, we're here to help you solidify your personal, business, and estate planning goals so that we can build a winning game plan together and help you achieve peace of mind. Please call us at 330-321-1413. Ferris Financial, helping you plan, protect, and prosper. The moment they hand over the keys, the day a house becomes a home, the feeling when your dream becomes a reality, these are the moments you'll remember forever. At People's Bank, our difference is providing you financial peace of mind and confidence. By asking the right questions and working with you, we earn your business. We know your family and understand your story. People's Bank, working together, building success. When buying or selling a home, the first thing is to make the call. Back into building. Our marketing plan speaks for itself. We get results with over 700 sales last year. So, Molly home. have you made a decision yet? Yes, we have. I don't know, Molly. That's a lot of money. It's the one I want. Buying a home Sign is one contract. of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. We take that seriously. One of every four homes sold is listed by McInturf Realty. Make the call to McInturf Realty, the sign that sells. Tonight's sporting event is brought to you in part by Bag Sports Pub, located at 136 East Main Street in Sugar Creek. Next time you're in the Sugar Creek area, be sure to check out Bag Sports Pub, where good friends, food, and spirits come together. Bernays Italian Deli and Cafe, located at 222 Logan Street in Denison. Serving the tastiest homemade food around with daily specials and to die for desserts. Bernays Italian Deli and Cafe. Come for lunch and leave as a friend. Peter's Tire and Auto Service, located at 135 North Water Street in downtown Eurexville. Peter's Tire and Auto is a full service shop offering a wide range of automotive services and is a certified Napa Auto Care Center. Almon Incorporated. You know them as A&M Service Center, located at 1172 Tuscaroras Avenue Northwest in New Philadelphia. Tis the season. If you know your car needs servicing soon, keep in mind our holiday hours. Schedule your appointment with A&M Service Center by calling 330-343-3013 this week 
to help you stay on schedule for your holiday travel. Twin City Pharmacy and Gift Shop, located at 21 Grant Street in Denison. Twin City Pharmacy and Gift Shop has been in existence for over 50 years, serving not only the needs of Denison and Eurexville customers, but customers from coast to coast. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and closed on Sundays. Back on the Ferris Financial Pregame Show with head coach Bob Vaughn, Cattle of the Dover Tornadoes, and I'm sure it's been a busy week. Big game tonight. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. We've prepared, and the kids have worked hard, and we're hoping that we can execute what we've worked on. You know, this is really kind of the culmination of four years for this current group of seniors. This is They've worked for this moment. Right. They've had uh, tremendous success in every sport, football, whether it be a football, baseball, basketball. They've been in the Sweet 16, the Elite 8, the Final Four, and all of them. And so they're familiar with uh, pressure pack situations. When you look at uh, John Glenn, a very familiar opponent, you know, you had a chance to play him earlier in the season. It didn't turn out in your favor. But, uh, you know, you, surely you learned a lot in that game. Well, yeah, Scott, they have some tremendous talent there and a team that ran to the regional final last year, picked up a couple new players to go with what they had returning with their leading scorer in Rackley. So they've got an awful lot of talent, and we've got to try and curb as much of it as possible. When you look at the game tonight, obviously you've been in these situations before. Does that affect how you're going to coach tonight? You know you know the pressure's on these kids? Well, we, we know that uh, we're the underdog tonight, so that's a better feeling sometimes. But we know that we have to defend really well. We have to limit their scores, Rackley and Weir's touches. And then offensively, we want to be selective and hopefully – have the ball a little bit more. All right, well, good luck tonight. Thank you. Head coach Bob Von Kennel of the Dover Tornadoes. That's been our Ferris Financial pregame show. We'll come back with our tip-off in a moment. Stay with us from Athens right here on TV2 Sports. If a child walks into our bank every month and deposits a dollar a day into their savings account, it'll make a real difference in their wallet when they grow up. Interest on savings that compounds into money earning more money on more money over time really adds up. Save with us and watch your money grow right alongside of your child or grandchild. First National Bank of Denison, member FDIC. It's all about you. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college. And yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are going to be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. I'm here every day to review patient care and progress notes and also discuss with the therapist, even after hours, what our goals are for the following day. Our patients are able to stay within the community, be close to their family and friends, which is a big part of the rehab process. What you get to see then is the actual progress taking place in a smaller time frame, so it's very visible and very real. It's not just something in the future, you're actually seeing it while it's happening. Union Hospital Quality Care, close to home. Myers & Miller Podiatry provides complete foot and ankle care to patients of all ages. The practice was established in 2000 by Dr. Adam Myers and has grown to include Dr. Andy Miller in 2007 and most recently Dr. Jason Backage in 2010. Our core values of respect and honesty are the basis for how we manage our practice and we have grown by building relationships with our patients in order to better serve their needs. Myers & Miller Podiatry serves Tuscaroras and Holmes County with offices in Dover, Sugar Creek, Newcomerstown, and Millersburg. Let's get started building our relationship. 
Government officials, business leaders, volunteers, and much more. You'll hear it all here on TV2 Profiles, exclusively on TV2. Hi, I'm your host, Cheyenne Carroll, and join me as I interview the Tuscarawas Valley's leading women. You can visit WJERTV2.com for show episodes and details. University Convocation Center in Athens. Scott Robinson and Judd Compton with you as we get ready for a game between Dover and John Glenn. Our keys to the game tonight brought to you by Jill Barker OD, a local family optometry practice with offices in Dover and Caddis. You can reach her in Dover at 330-364-6941 or in Caddis at 740-942-4433. So Judd, what are your keys to tonight's game? Well, first of all, I think I look at clamp down on the defense. Uh, make someone else beat you. Drew Racky and Matt Weir were the the, the big opponents that hurt them the first time down. So just an extra step faster. Uh, the second thing would keep the game close. They won by 23 the last time, and if you can keep it tight, maybe cause some panic. The expe expectation's too deep at the end. And the last one is just depth and energy. We need some minute fillers by the kids off the bench, contain some precious minutes when foul trouble or if they're uh, looking for a rest. The keys to the game brought to you by Jill Barker OD, a local family optometry practice with offices in Dover and Cadiz. Our starting lineups tonight brought to you by your local nationwide insurance agents, Don Kemp, located at 2146 East High Avenue in New Philadelphia, and Doug Sofer, located at 435 West High Avenue, also in New Philly. If you're looking for home, car, health, or life insurance, give Don a call at 330-339-4211 or Doug a call at 330-339-4700. For the Dover Tornadoes, their starting lineup tonight, uh, Micah Keith, Evan Snyder, Corey Cantini, Austin Laughlin, and Blake Blair. Same five all season long. And for the John Glenn Muskies, Austin Blatt, Tanner Slack, Luke Hendrickson, Matt Weir, and Drew Rackley. Those are our starting lineups brought to you by your local nationwide insurance agents, Don Kemp and Doug Sofer, both in New Philadelphia. As we get ready to go here with our national anthem, it's brought to you by Dr. Jill Barker, a local family optometry practice with offices in Dover and Caddis. Thanks for choosing Dr. Jill Barker as a Times reporter, Reader's Choice for Favorite Eye Doctor 2014. Let's get onto the floor for our national anthem. by Omni Orthopedics. If you've been sidelined with an injury, get back into the game with the home team at Omni Orthopedics. With more than 30 years of orthopedic experience, their physicians offer patient-centered treatment for all ages. Everybody healthy and ready to go, so we're looking forward to a great basketball game between the Dover Tornadoes and the John Glenn Muskies. The injury report again brought to you by Omni Orthopedics. If you've been sidelined with an injury, get back into the game with the home team at Omni Orthopedics. Officially.
Delver Chemical Company is a proud sponsor of tonight's high school basketball playoff game. They say go Tornadoes. And another corporate sponsor of our contest is Buffalo Wild Wings with their newest location at 1072 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Buffalo Wild Wings is the official NCAA hangout for NCAA sports. So as we uh, get closer to the start of this game, Judd, you know, you've been here yourself as a coach. It's a very exciting time. What are some of the things that the, the players and coaches for the Tornadoes are thinking about right now? Well, I think it's a different situation than when we were going through it because it's something new for us. These two teams have played each other once this year, and they've already played once again uh, in the regional final last year. So it's, uh, it's going to be a whole different atmosphere for those two guys because they're so familiar. But, again, this is, this is part of the road where you want to get to the final four. And for Dover last year with all those juniors and now our seniors, this is what they've been working for. So trying to get over the hump. And uh, John Glenn, they got a lot of juniors this year, but obviously it was 23-0 record. They, they're expecting big things as well. Well, they're pretty, they're pretty balanced, except for Drew Rackley, who's averaging about 20 points a game. They've got some great balanced scoring throughout their lineup. Well, I think, you know, when we saw him play last year as a sophomore, we were pretty impressed with Rackley. He can use both hands. He's got a quick release. He can take it to the hole. And he's using the shoot with the three-pointer. He's a complete player, so I'm sure Dover's game plan is going to try and take him out. But they are very balanced. Now, but they can get other guys that can shoot it. They got some depth line. inside as well. So, uh, they got a challenge tonight. Dover just needs to bring up a little bit more energy than they had the first time. But you know, the ball, one step quicker on defense. And I think they got a chance to keep this one tight for the end. And then it comes down to free throws. The Dover Tornadoes averaging 62 points a game, giving up 41 and a half. Their only losses have come to John Glenn and Zanesville. For the John Glenn Muskies, they average 73 points a game, giving up 44.8 per contest. They did defeat the Dover Tornadoes 73 to 50 in the regular season. That uh, coming back on February the third. The Dover Tornadoes along the tournament trail defeated Buckeye local Indian Valley and Steubenville, so they are primed. And Austin Laughlin's coming off a huge performance against Steubenville, which he had 26 points, was a real force inside. Well, Dover's got some balance as well. I mean, they got Blake Blair, who's a District 5 Player of the Year, and Corey Contini with his quickness out there, and, and Evan Snyder and Micah Keith ball handling. But to me, I think everything that Dover does offensively goes through Austin Laughlin. He, he he's their guy inside that can get some shots off. He can throw it inside, he throw it out, but he's such a great offensive rebounder that that 24 points, or uh, 27 he had last game, was uh, a big night for him. But I've seen him do it a lot this whole year long. So our tip-off tonight brought to you by Ferris Financial LLC. If you're looking for an effective financial coach, put Matt Ferris at Ferris Financial on your sideline by giving him a call at 330-321-1413. The Dover Tornadoes in their gray uniforms, John Glenn in the white uniforms as we get ready for the tip-off here in this Sweet 16 contest at the Convo in Athens. It'll be Austin Laughlin in the center circle against Matt Weir, the tap controlled by John Glenn. Weir's got it out top. They look back door. Instead, they'll go down low to Rackley. Nice patience, gets two. It's like a nice set play up. They took it to the corner and had Racky uh, post up inside. Good good play, and they executed it well. Micah Keith, the floor general for the Tornadoes, gets it to Blake Blair. Off the screen is Snyder. Over to Blair, now to Contini. 7.25 to go, first quarter. Keith's got it in the corner. He'll dribble back out top over to Blair. Tough man-to-man -to -man defense here by the... Muskies early on. Tornado's taking their time, Judd, being very, very patient. Well, I think they want to try and keep the score down. Uh, you know, John Glenn scored 73 the first time, and I think Dover would like to keep it in the 50s. Blair drops it inside. Laughlin has it blocked from behind his own rebound and the follow. That's what Laughlin is going to have to do because he's really the only true inside presence for the Tornadoes. Oh, Tornado's good patience last time, then. Rackley on the baseline gets two more, and he is picking up right where he left off against the Tornadoes their last game. Well, he's so good at finding a way to get a shot off and getting quick release and uh, taking the baseline down low, and we've seen two, two different shots already in the first minute of the game. Keith brings it out top. Snyder looked at the three, decides not to pull the trigger. Contini's got it. He's going to bring it back out top. 
Trying to poke and probe the defense of the Muskies. The three-point shot by Blair, no good. But Laughlin tips it out to Snyder. Back to Keith. We're down to 6-11 to go. The Muskies leading it 4-2. Down low, Laughlin in the paint. And he's going to walk with it. It looks like John Glenn's decided defensively to play behind Austin Laughlin and try to force him away from the... Uh, the uh, basket as much as they can. That time they were able to double down on and cause the travel. John Glenn's got it. They bring it out top to Blatt. He'll give it to Rackley. Rackley has both the baskets here for John Glenn early on. Well, John Slack Glenn, trying to find an entry pass into Hendrickson. They got a mismatch down inside, but they couldn't get to him. Weir dribbles out on the wing. Now they're trying to go at that mismatch inside again. Blair's trying to hang back to protect against Hendrickson, who got switched on to Micah Keith. Open from the outside, Blatt, three-pointer, no good. Contini fights for it, gets it to Keith. So right now, the Tornadoes have to like the tempo of this game. Well, they're doing a good job on the boards. They had a couple offensive rebounds, and that time, John Glenn one shot. Snyder over to Contini. In the paint, stops, pops, no good. The rebound. That Austin Blatt, they'll turn and run. Muskies into the front court. Ball's knocked away. Blatt gets it back inside. Nice pass. Weir for two. Basket by Matt Weir. Weir doing a good job. Just Austin holding Blatt himself in the air there to use his body to hold off the defense to get that shot. Tornadoes control the tempo all they want, but they need to put some points on the board. Loft little pop out, gets the pass from Contini. Off the screen, Blair, out pretty high outside the three-point line, quickly around, and then down low to Laughlin. Turn around on the baseline, no good. The rebound to Rackley. They push it up the floor to Weir. Weir down the right side, looking for Hendrickson inside, gets the screen, pick and roll. Hendrickson had it, then fumbled it. Takes it in the lane with the left hand, no good. So the Tornado's trying to keep the tempo down, and with four minutes to go here in the first quarter, they've done a pretty good job of that. Well, uh, John Glenn's just got a lot of quickness on their defense, and, can be, and they're able to switch uh, because their all players are pretty similar in size and quickness. So it's, they were having a hard time getting a good, good look at the basket. Snyder with it on the wing, brings it back out to Snyder, or to Contini. 3.40 to go here, first quarter. Contini down low to Laughlin, needs some help. Finds Contini to Keith in the corner to Snyder. He has it taken away. Tanner Slack with the steal. Tornadoes just can't afford to turn it over and give John Glenn extra Two possessions. So goes Matt Weir cashed that one in very quickly at the Matt other Weir. end. Weir looked like he made up his mind halfway uh, down the floor. He's going to do that and he's executed it. Laughlin hits the deck hard. Tornado's had it, but it's taken away. They score here. It's going to be a timeout. Dovers. Rockley takes it to the hoop, and it'll go to the line. It's 8-2, to two and the momentum is switched to John Glenn. Well, that's the first time that Dover has been able to, was Dover gave up the uh, fast break opportunity, and that's what they don't want to get into. But uh, you know, it, when you take it deep into the box like they did down there, Austin Laughlin took it to the hoop and didn't score, and everybody else is in there trying to rebound. That's when you give up these outlet passes. And, Drew Rackley to the line. He and Weir have four apiece. And Rackley can't coax it in as we'll get some substitutions in. This is a key to me. You got three guys coming off the bench for John Glenn here to keep their guys fresh. It could be a factor down the road for Dover as far as their strength of legs. And Second free throw by Rackley is up and good. Yeah, the good part of that as a coach, and you get the guys in the game early, get them, get a feel for it in case you need them down the stretch. And so, uh, well, you've got Caden Jones, Levi Callahan, and Sam Eckleberry into the game for Coach Greg Woodard and the Muskies. Nine to two. John Glenn with the lead. Snyder inside the Laughlin. Keith's got it. To Snyder. 
Snyder has that ability to shoot from the outside, but just has not taken a lot of shots in recent games. Laughlin out to Contini. 2.29 to go here, first quarter. Snyder out to Blair. Blair, the dribble drive, the shot on the baseline for two. Nice former by Blake, got his feet Blake set straight Blair. up. Nice release on the ball and a big basket for Dover. 2.11 to go here in the first quarter, 9-4. to four. And the throwaway by John Glenn. This is where Dover's got to make up some points while the, the substitutions are in for John Glenn. Well, if Dover can get a, a key basket, maybe a three here, and it'll tighten things up again really quickly. That was a big turnover. Snyder's got it on the wing. Over to continue. They're going to spread the floor into a four corners. They let Contini wheel and deal. He gets it to Blair. Out to Snyder. You've got to think John Glenn expected Dover to try and slow this down a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's why they're in a aggressive man to man. And, you know, Dover's even pulling it out even further, trying to widen this out. Contini gives it to Keith. Over to Snyder. Snyder trying to test the defense, finds Laughlin in the corner. Not surprising here, really, that Dover's tried to take the year out of the basketball a little bit. The only, the only thing that might be a little surprising because uh, John Glenn's reserves are in there, or their second team's in there right now, it might be the time to try some opportunities. Contini finds Snyder. Bounce pass inside, Laughlin, nice spin move off the glass, too hard. And it'll be out of bounds to the Tornadoes. It's a good look inside here. Austin might have got a little bit too quick on the shot there. Um, John Glenn's well coached. They're just not letting him have a freedom to go to the basket. They're making him shoot it over top. And he's not real comfortable with that just yet. Tanner Slack and Drew Rackley return here with 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. Nice pass inside. All alone is Michael Keith. Beautiful execution on the inbound Excellent. play. Excellent. The bob for three at the other end. That's pretty fast as Levi Callahan with a triple. Just when Dover thinks they're going to get back into it, boom, John Glenn's yeah. down, hits a three. When you, when you take a minute off a clock to get a basket and they take 15 seconds, I wonder how emotionally that hurts. Contini drops it down inside. We're going to have a, a foul first. And Dover is going to inbound from underneath their own basket. Was a nice look here by Corey Contini. Unfortunately for Dover, he got the foul beforehand, but good presence of the court there. Keith over there to Snyder. Now to Contini with 16 seconds to go first quarter. 12-6, Muskies leading the Tornadoes. Continue the behind the back dribble taken away by Caden Jones. Two seconds to go. One, they're not going to get it away. At the end of one, it's 12 6. John Glenn leading Dover. We'll come back to second quarter action in a moment here on TV2 Sports. Omni Orthopedics comprehensive programs provide early diagnosis and successful treatment for every musculoskeletal problem. With more than 30 years of orthopedic experience, their physicians offer patient-centered treatment for all ages. From evaluation to rehabilitation, your treatment plan is designed around your needs. Omni Orthopedics specializes in sports medicine, the spine, physical medicine and rehabilitation, foot and ankle, and hand surgery. If pain makes activities like climbing stairs, standing or walking a challenge, Turn to the home team at Omni Orthopedics. Their mission is to provide you with the highest quality and most advanced orthopedic services so you can get back in the game. Located in the Oxford Medical Arts Building, Omni offers a full service facility including digital x-ray and physical therapy. So there's no need to travel when quality care is so close to home. Omni Orthopedics, setting the standard in orthopedic care. Well, I woke up to the sound of silence and cars. We're 
cutting like knives in a fist fight. And I found you with a tear in your eye, your head in the curtains, and heart like the Fourth of July. You swore and said, We are not, we are not shiny stars. This I know, I never said we are. If you're lost and alone, or you sink, you like a stone, carry on. Tell me, are you confident in your financial game plan? Hello, I'm Matt Ferris, president of Ferris Financial. If you're like most people, you've probably spent a lot of time talking about getting your financial affairs to order, but for some reason, the game plan has never come together. At Ferris Financial, we're here to help you solidify your personal, business, and estate planning goals so that we can build a winning game plan together and help you achieve peace of mind. Please call us at 330-321-1413. Ferris Financial, helping you plan, protect, and prosper. The moment they hand over the keys, the day a house becomes a home, the feeling when your dream becomes a reality, these are the moments you'll remember forever. At People's Bank, our difference is providing you financial peace of mind and confidence. By asking the right questions and working with you, we earn your business. We know your family and understand your story. People's Bank, working together, building success. Looking for ways to get a return on your marketing investment? Get results with Digital Marketing Group. We provide a digital marketing solution with state-of-the-art opportunities to increase your visibility in the community, optimize your digital presence, and maximize your marketing investment. We specialize in affordable websites, custom mobile apps, search engine and social media optimization, high definition video production, broadcast television. If it's digital, we develop it. If you're looking for a way to increase your profitability, obtain new customers, retain current customers, and get the return on your marketing investment, then go digital. Get results with the Digital Marketing Group. And back as we begin this second quarter, Dover trailing 12 to 6. Time for our first quarter recap brought to you by People's Bank, a full-service consumer and business bank located at 1309 Northwest in New Philadelphia, offering you convenient online banking, working together, building success. Tornadoes are fighting to stay in the game. They've uh, really tried to slow this pace down. Well, John Glansman's not going to let them do it. They, they're getting out and um, forcing Dover to, to be a little bit more aggressive and uh, hand on the ball, and they've gotten a couple turnovers from that. But 12-6, a couple scores in this game still in, in, in in a good enough shape with how much time we've got left for the Dover. The first quarter recap brought to you by the fine folks at People's Bank, a full-service consumer and business bank located at 1309 4th Street Northwest in New Philadelphia. Blair, the fadeaway, short. The rebound by Matt Weir. He'll get it to Rackley. Rackley in the lane, has it poked away from behind by Contini. Blair on the run, gives it up to Contini. Takes it in for two. Up the drive for two, Corey Contini. 12 nice. to eight. Nice opportunity basket there on the steal. And good drive by Corey to finish it off. Hendrickson works against Laughlin. You know, that's a key, too. They've got to keep Austin Laughlin out of foul trouble. Yeah, so far, both teams just with one foul, so as, as physically as they've been. And we're going to get the foul out of front as it looked like Austin Blatt with the illegal screen. Good call First there by the official as uh, Blatt kind of stuck his shoulder out there and gave him a, a big football block there, and he got called for the offensive foul. So another break for the Tornadoes here, and a chance to tighten it up even more. So the Tornadoes with 7.07 to go here in the first half. Trail it by four. Snyder tried to get it to Laughlin, taken away by Tanner Slack. And John Glenn quickly changes to offense as Keith knocks it out. 
Don't forget, coming up here at halftime, we'll have our Bell Stores halftime report, and we'll have our halftime adjustment brought to you by the Vasco Group. Scott Robinson and Jed Compton with you from the Convocation Center at Ohio University in Athens. Rackley off the screen to Weir. Weir drives down the right side. Back out to Slack, and he gets the triple. Tanner Slack. Slack, six foot three, and had a good steal down the court, hit a big three in there. He's got some size out there shooting a three pointer. Keith gets it to Snyder. Inside Blair. Blair with the left hand for two. From the paint for the deuce, Blake Blair. Slack waits, shoots, got it. That's a three. Well, by my count, they've had three threes here so far in the first half. And Slack hitting both of those that time, waiting for the Dover defender to move out of the way and hit another three consecutive. Contini at the elbow, the jumper. Bounces up and in. Pull up for two, Corey Contini. Nice basket by Corey there. Good jumper. John Glenn trying to answer here. They lead it by six with 5.44 to go here in the first half. The drop off to Weir, to Hendrickson. He's been quiet, averaging about seven a game. Laughlin comes out on Rackley. They'll drop it down low, and two for Hendrickson. Under knee, Luke Hendrickson from Drew Rackley. Nice court awareness there by Rackley. And a beautiful lead pass inside. That was all created after they uh, jump switched that and brought Laughlin out, and that gives them a little bit of a miss. Miss size uh, inside, and they took advantage that time. 20 to 12, an eight point lead for John Glenn. Five minutes to go here, first half. Starters have played nearly all the minutes for the Tornado so far. And we'll get a foul on Hendrickson. Gilbert doing a good job getting the ball down to uh, Laughlin, but again, uh, John Glenn has, has chosen to play from the basket out, and uh, that time uh, Hendrickson a little late getting there, but Austin's working really hard inside there. Tyler Brass in for Evan Snyder for the Tornadoes. And we'll get a foul from behind against Laughlin. I believe it's going to be maybe Hendrickson again. And that'll be his second. Luke Hendrickson picking up his second personal foul. That's a total of four for the team. Back on the floor, Sam Ecclesbury. Well, we'll so see if that makes a key there. Uh, he's Hendrickson. been playing pretty well inside for John Glenn size-wise. So, uh, Laughlin, just, he's so quick down there and works so hard, it's hard to defend him without fouling him. Sam Eckleberry in for Hendrickson for John Glenn. Blair inside to Brass, back out to Blair. Fires the three, that's short. Rebound to Rackley, he's one on three. Dribbles through traffic, puts the shot up, gets the foul. And that is going to be on Corey, Corey Contini. Number 11 with his second personal foul. That's also two on Contini. Sends Drew Rackley to the line. Coach Von Kennel goes quickly to the bench. He's going to take a timeout as Evan Snyder will come back in. Well, give us a chance to tell you that our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Omni Orthopedics. If you've been sidelined with an injury, get back into the game with the home team at Omni Orthopedics. And we also want to thank our sponsors that are helping us bring you this broadcast. One of them is Moore and Needenthal, certified public accountants, located at 3034 North Worcester Avenue in Dover. If you're looking for experienced, innovative solutions for today's business, give Matt a call at 330-364-7774. So the Dover Tornadoes trailing here by eight. And Drew Rackley will be at the line to shoot two free throws. You know, a couple of points. Rackley, uh, he's just so uh, smooth out there. He's got like a second gear, and he sets you up, and then he's by you, and does a great job of keeping his head up and dribbling without looking at it. The other point I was going to think is, is Blake Blair. I think Blake's really looking for his, his shot. He's one of the tornadoes. Is looking. He's missed a couple. And I think if he starts hitting them, because he really looks strong out there shooting it, it's going to make a difference here. And he's got to continue because the tornadoes need some kind of offense. Rackley misses the first. He'll have a second with 4:41 to go here. In the first half, second shot, good. So we'll see some pressure here from John Glenn. 
Let's see what the Tornadoes can do with uh, Corey Contini going to the bench for the last 437 in the second quarter with two fouls. Snyder looking for Blair off the screen, not there. Being patient, and what we might see is the Tornadoes being a little patient here with Contini on the bench. Brass finds Keith. Down low it goes to Laughlin, inside. Rolls it in for two. Drive and basket for Austin Laughlin. Good move there by Austin. Again, I think he took advantage of the uh, John Glenn sub that time, was able to beat him to the hole. Jaden Jones has it, gives it to Rackley here with under four minutes to go, first half. Rackley to the lane. Shots no good. Looked like he might have got bumped. No call. Tornadoes end up with it. And one player that's been quiet, that's really got a nice three-point stroke, is Micah Keith. Micah hadn't shot yet, but he's been a good floor general delivering the ball. Laughlin has it. They're not going to pay a lot of attention to him out there. Now Snyder to Keith with 3.28 to play here. First half, Scott Robinson and Jed Compton with you from Athens, Ohio. Sweet 16 game between Dover and John Glenn right here on TV2 Sports. Keith dribbling on the right side. Finds Blair. They'll drop it down low. Brass leans in. Shot no good. Tipped out. Laughlin has it. He'll take it strong to the hoop with the right hand. It won't go. Brass again. Couple of head fakes. Puts up the shot. No good. It'll bounce long. And the Muskies have a run out at the other end by Caden Jones. Kate Jones. Oh, that was just unlucky by the Tornadoes. He had three good shots at it. And again, everybody got it packed in there. And John Glenn finally with that breakaway basket. Again, just unlucky for the Tornadoes. Let's see if the Tornadoes maybe go to a little bit of a four-corner set here. Keith's got it on the far side. Inside of Laughlin, and he's going to get bodied up by Caden Jones. There was a big mismatch there. And Jones with the foul. Okay, good. Austin's just a tough, a tough ticket down there. If you've got to guard him inside, because he's, he's got a strong upper body, and, and he's so quick, and he can go a couple different ways. And that time uh, pulled the foul up on Caden Jones. As you said, it was a mismatch. So the Tornadoes will box it up for the inbounds play. Snyder, the trigger man, inside to Blair. Gives it back to Snyder, back to Blair. Blair muscles inside for two. Inside good luck, good strong move. 2.10 to go here in the first half. 23-16, Muskies. Jones over to Weir. Brings it back out. Jones has got it behind the back dribble. To Weir along the baseline. Kicks it on through to Callahan. They'll reverse it over to Jones, and he'll fire the three. High bouncer knocked out of bounds by Blair, and it'll be Muskie's basketball. Directly re-enters. We talked one thing about John Glenn and about the Jones. trying to take the ball out of Racky's hand. Well, they've had one, two, three, four. They've had six players score, so they've, they've had good balance on their side. The Tornadoes, four of their starters have scored. Into the first time, number 32, Christian Rondazzo. Christian Rondazzo into the game for the Tyler Tornadoes. Brass. Tyler Brass takes a seat quick with minute 49 to play. Here in the second quarter, Rackley gets it out top to Blatt. Bounces high off the rim. Keith with the rebound. Tornadoes trailing by seven. Coach Bob Von Kennel calling out the play from the sideline. As Randazzo gives it back to Keith. Tornadoes will take an easy shot if they get one, but I think they're going to be patient here to make sure they do get a decent shot. Being down only seven, that's pretty good shape for them. Snyder to the hoop with the right hand. Snyder. Nice time for Snyder to get his first points there. Five-point lead for John Glenn. Callahan's got it in the corner. It goes to Weir. 
Under a minute to play here in the first half. Weir from the outside for three. Rattled it in and out. Rackley had the rebound, and we're going to get a foul on the Tornadoes. Almost looks like John Glenn's just happy taking that three-pointer. They've taken the last three, and they missed them, and they were getting... You know, sometimes when you shoot so many and score early in the game, you think this is easy, and that's all they've been doing. And it's not been very successful, thank goodness, for the Tornadoes, and they've been able to rebound. And well, Tanner Slack is back in for John Glenn. And the ball's knocked out of bounds by Laughlin. Forty-four seconds to go till halftime. Our Bell Stores halftime report and our Vasco Group halftime adjustment coming up. Outside for three. No good. Looks like we're going to have another foul inside. This time, though, on John Glenn. Looked like Rackley shoved Snyder underneath. Good That'll block be his out. first. By Snyder that time. Tornado's got 40 seconds here. If they decide they want to just wait for one shot, I think they'd be happy to only be down five here or... If they could hit a three or two, even closer. Looks like John Glenn's going to pick it up and try to force him to play a little faster. So the Tornadoes have it. And it's Micah Keith with a 32 seconds to go. Out to Blair. Blair gives it up to Keith. The dribble drive. Boy, a lot of defenders out there trying to stop the drive for John Glenn. Tornado's only trailing by five. Great position if they can put a basket in here. They love to go to the locker room with some momentum. Snyder has it. Behind the back dribble. The three-point fadeaway. No good. And the rebound to John Glenn as the buzzer sounds at halftime. It's 23 to 18. We'll come back with our Bell Stores halftime report and also have the Vasco Group halftime adjustment. That's all coming up shortly right here on TV2 Sports. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college. And yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are going to be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. You can create a lasting legacy with a gift to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation. It provides a safe, trustworthy, philanthropic choice for your estate planning needs. Through the generosity of area residents, the foundation has been able to provide nearly $5 million in funding for a variety of community projects and student scholarships that have positively impacted each corner of our county. Help your community by making a tax-deductible donation to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation today. WJER and TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not-So-Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. In the nation, it's not always pretty. But add brand new belongings from Nationwide Insurance 
you will replace destroyed or stolen items with brand new versions. We take care of the heat so you don't get burned. Just another way we put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. As the area's leader in direct-to-garment printing, you won't be surprised by Denison T-Shirt Graphics' huge range of services, screen printing, banners, engraving, graphic design, and embroidery. They offer just about anything you can imagine, like shirts, mugs, hats, plaques, trophies, and more. They're located right here in New Philadelphia on the south side and on the web at denisontshirt.com. When buying or selling a home, the first thing is to make the call. Back into Realty. Our marketing plan speaks for itself. We get results with over 700 sales last year. So, Molly and Colton, have you made a decision yet? Yes, we have. I don't know, Molly. That's a lot of money. It's the one I want. Buying a home Sign is one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. We take that seriously. One of every four homes sold is listed by McInturf Realty. Make the call to McInturf Realty, the sign that sells. And welcome back. It's halftime at the Ohio University Convocation Center in Athens. A Sweet 16 battle between John Glenn and Dover. John Glenn up by five. Welcome to our Bell Stores Halftime Report brought to you by the Bell Stores with four convenient locations to better serve you in Dover, Bolivar, New Philadelphia, and Strasburg. Stop in at your local convenient Bell Store and make sure your family is running on full four the second half. And Judd, a pretty good game. Tornado still within striking distance. Well, I think they have to be pretty happy. Uh, uh, they haven't been scoring a lot, but they have six offensive rebounds. And, and because they've been able to do a few of those things to scrap and stay in the ball game, that's really helped. Uh, they have not have had not any perimeter shooting going on. All their points have been in the paint, so they might be looking to try to extend that offense out a little bit in the second well, let's, half. Let's take a look at our numbers here uh, for the second or okay. for the first looking half. At, first of all, for the Tornadoes, nine of 21 from the field for 43%. Uh, they have not made it to the free throw line, which might be another key in the second half. For John Glenn, nine of 16 for uh, 56%. They went to the free throw line twice, uh, and they've made two of four. Rebounding totals, uh, nine for Dover, including six of those on the offensive board, just seven for John Glenn. And, uh, turnovers, not not many, five for Dover and four for John Glenn. So it's been a pretty clean up and down game and both teams playing hard. All right, that's our halftime report brought to you by the Bell Stores. They're better serving you in Dover, Bolivar, New Philadelphia, and Strasburg. Our halftime adjustment brought to you by the Vasco Group, a full-service asphalt paving and maintenance company. You can catch them at www.thevascogroup.com. Quick halftime adjustment for the Tornadoes. Well, adjustments, you either have to do something creative or something preventive. And for the Tornadoes, they got to create some more of, uh, outside shooting, and uh, John Glenn's just not letting them do for the prevent. Uh, John Glenn, their success has been a three. And uh, for the Tornadoes, they got to they got to find a way to stop that. And, and John Glenn did not score in the last two. 0.52 seconds of the second quarter. So they did something right. So some good adjustments in the second quarter. Our halftime adjustment brought to you by the Vasco Group, a full-service asphalt paving and maintenance company. The start of the second half brought to you by Ferris Financial LLC. If you're looking for an effective financial coach, put Matt Ferris at Ferris Financial on your sideline by giving him a call at 330-321-1413. The Muskies have it to start the third quarter. Five-point lead. And we'll see what the Tornadoes can do here in the second half. Deflected out of bounds. It'll be John Glenn basketball. There's just been no easy passes and only just a couple easy breakaway shots. Uh, Dover had one and uh, John Glenn had two. Other than that, both teams have had to work hard to get their points. Rackley has it. Hendrickson able to corral it. Out to slack. And around the horn we go. And Weir drives the basket, and the foul will be on Contini, and that's his third. Hard to argue that one. Coach Bonkill's got a decision. Usually he will keep them out, but uh, when, when Corey got his second foul, it was four minutes ago in the down eight, and the uh, Tornadoes were able to hold, hold the game together, only down five with, that, with some players off the bench. Weir shot a little too hard. Look at a second shot here. Tornadoes open up here with 
Keith, Snyder, Laughlin, Contini, and Blair. And it's the original starting five for John Glenn as well as they missed the free throw. Contini's got the rebound. Coach Von Kettle's going to roll the dice here and leave Corey Contini in the game. Yeah, at this point, I think he's got to give Corey a chance to get a feel for the game. You know, if you're sitting over there all the time, it's hard, it's hard to have a feel. Blair inside, off the window, no good. Battle for it, pops out to Keith. Dover scrapping, maybe a, a little bit more of hustle than uh, John Glenn at this point. I think they got a little more energy than they had the first time they played, and that's the seventh offensive board by the Tornadoes. Blair in the lane, the leaner off the glass. No good, Laughlin the follow. Put back basket, Austin Laughlin. By Austin, another offensive board. Slack drives, puts it in off the window. for the deuce. Slack. Slack with a two-pointer to go with his two three-pointers. 6.46 to go, third quarter. Five-point lead, John Glenn. It's been close all the way. John Glenn, the biggest lead they had was nine early on, but the uh, Tornadoes have not led in this game yet. Keith down to Blair. Blocked and will get the foul. That'll be on Austin Blatt. Good job by Blake Blair again. I just, just the eye test, as they say. You look at him, and he's he's really strong out there tonight. He's really feeling that he needs to take it, step up here and take charge and try to score for the Tornadoes. Blair at 83% from the free throw line. Connects. He's got seven. Average is about 13 a game. You're the District 5 Player of the Year. That's what you expect. Second free throw up and good. Down to three at 25 to 22. And at the other end, the three-point shot is no good. Dover gets the rebound. Let's see what the Tornadoes can do with it from here. The Tornadoes with the basketball, trailing by three. Contini over to Snyder. Snyder wanted to pull the trigger on it, couldn't. Stolen away by Weir. Weir puts up the crazy shot for two. Steal. Drop. Basket. Matt heck of a shot. Corey Contini had to back off there a little bit because he didn't want to pick up his fourth foul. In some ways, I think that was a little bit of basketball IQ on Weir because he knew Contini had three fouls. Yeah, could have like there was a little contact, but no call. And, but they did get the basket. Snyder has it on the wing, standing in front of coach Bob Von Kennel. Von Kennel calls out the play. Gattini has it out top. Tornado's had it within three. The lead back out to five for John Glenn. Blair at the elbow. There's going to be a foul. You know, one of the things you do when you're with your tornadoes and kind of holding the ball a little bit, it takes some time. When you're only playing basically five guys, it does give them a chance to catch your breath maybe a little bit, even though you're still on the, on the floor. Third foul on Austin Blatt. That'll bring in Caden Jones. Keith got the inbounds pass, gives it to Snyder. Snyder, chest pass over to Keith. 5.06 to go here, third quarter. And Blair stepped on the end line. It'll be John Glenn basketball. Another unlucky situation there for the Tornadoes. Blake just lost sight of where he was at. Did step on the inbounds. Tough, tough turnover. So John Glenn with a chance to expand its five-point lead. Hendrickson out in the corner to slack. No good. Jones, the follow, partially blocked. And it'll be Keith that'll come out of there with a tough rebound. Micah Keith with another block. He had five in the last game. He's becoming our Patrick Ewing in Dover. Keith at the elbow. Kicks it to Laughlin. Laughlin in the lane. Throws up a shot. Then it's bounced off John Glenn. It'll be Dover basketball. Laughlin has played great at times. Other times he's, he's been just a little bit out of control. Well, the officials are either doing a great job or a poor job. They're really letting them play and, uh, you know, no call there. But uh, from up here. Yeah, looked like he got bumped. Contini from the outside for three. 
bounces around and drops. Big basket for Corey Cantini. It's 27-25. Well, we talked about some things unlucky. That was, uh, I don't know if it was lucky or skill, but it was a good, good bucket for the Tornadoes. Jones over to Rackley. We're to slack. Right now, Tornado's doing a great job on Rackley. Snyder has been doing most of that himself. In the lane with Weir. Bounces off the back of the iron. Rebound, Blair. That time John Glenn did take it to the hoop. Hit the back of the iron. A big rebound there by Blair. So Contini fires it over to Snyder. 3.24 to go third quarter. Tornado crowds hopping. John Glenn's pretty quiet over there. So Again, the goal is to try and stay close to the end of the third quarter. Contini drops it back. Snyder for three. Got it! Goes ahead! 28-27. Big time for their first three. Snyder. Timeout. What a shot by Evan Snyder. And he's put the Tornadoes on top. And what a game so far for Dover. Well, it's great to see the Snyder hit that three. It's the first one he's really taken from distance. And, uh, you know, it's good to see him score. But, boy, he's been a great job uh, playing uh, against Racky. He's been pretty much matched up with him all night. He's held him to just six points. And, you know, what a great time for a big three there. The 20 is first lead of the night. Well, I suspect in the John Glenn huddle they're saying, hey, let's get the ball in Rackley's hands and let him create something here. We haven't used him much. Let's see if we can let him work his magic. You know, early on, John Glenn was doing some pick and rolls and were successful with that. They were getting some mismatches with Racky uh, handling the ball, and he shot a couple, drove a couple, and made some nice pass. But they're, they've been just resigned to uh, shoot that three-pointer so much, and they haven't had really little. Yeah, yeah, they've fallen in love with that, and it's either yeah. it's feast or famine with it. Right now, the Tornado's uh, lucky that uh, they're having a little bit of an off night from outside the arc. Let's see if they go back to a little bit of picking and rolling and trying to get Racky some screens away from the ball. John Glenn with a basketball. Weir. Into the lane, back out to Jones, over to Slack. You know, one of the things I noticed is that Snyder, they pretty much have just put him on Racky. He's not responsible for any help defense. He just face guarding, keeping the ball outside. On the Weir for three. Trifecta, Matt Weir. So now it's a back and forth game as Contini drops it down low to Laughlin for two. By Austin Laughlin, assist by Corey. Nice answer there by Corey. Continue driving down the middle and Laughlin finishing it off. So the Muskies. Weir sends it over to Slack for three. No good. And the rebound. Blair is going to pick it up, gives it to Key. Fires it ahead. Snyder. And the Tornadoes will slow it down. Minute 50 to go here in the third quarter. 30-30. Much, much, much better game than we saw the first time around. Well, the Tornadoes didn't, weren't able to set the pace so much the first half, which they sure are right now. The tie ball game. They're going to their four corners and take some time off the clock. This is going to come down to a fourth quarter shootout. You can already sense it, but uh, it is going to go right down to the wire. Both teams so similar. Five second call. Or they're going to call, wait, an offensive foul. They called, All right. called Evan Snyder. He went over and pivoted and pushed off, or they called him for pushing off. I don't know how if it was an Academy Award or not, but uh, the action cost him a foul. Well, with a minute 22 to go, Corey Contini heads to the bench. Tyler Brass is in. Snyder now with two fouls. Foul trouble has not been a problem for either team right now, except Corey Contini playing with three. And Jones trying to create some room. Picks up the third foul on Snyder. Boy, Dover looked like they really had that defense well, and uh, Jones had no place to go. I'm not sure about that call, but... Minute four to go, third quarter. 
Jones has it. Gives it to Callahan. Back to Jones. Don't forget, you can check out all the replays of our games from all season on the WJERTV2.com website. Both wrestling and basketball. Right now, we're locked up in a Sweet 16 battle between Dover and John Glenn. We are forced to the side by Laughlin. He'll get the foul. I thought John Glenn was going to be happy with just the last second shot here and try to get some momentum. But we decided to take it to the hoop and pick up the foul on Laughlin. Just his first in this physical game. And we are to the line with two shots to take. So we are at the line. First shot is up and good. We are the first player in double figures with 10. What are mighty two early optical located at 658 Boulevard in Dover is a proud sponsor of our boss high school tournament basketball game. It says go tornadoes. Along with this game brought to you in part by more Neenthal Incorporated certified public accountants located at 3034 Northwester Avenue in Dover. If you're looking for experienced innovative solutions for today's business, give Matt a call at 330-364-7774. Blair and Laughlin and Keith have all played the whole game where John Glenn's been rotating a lot of players. We'll see if that has a factor down in that fourth quarter. So 28 seconds to go. John Glenn leading it by two. Snyder with the basketball. Over to Keith. Keith with just two points. And they're going to say he turned the ball over. Carry. Not a call you'd expect at that point. Again. Nah, we've seen a couple of calls there tonight. I haven't seen all year. So, you know, you get you get officials from different regions of the state when you get to the regional. So I'm not sure exactly where they're from if they're from the northwest, but uh, different style maybe. Yeah, that's that's a big call here as we've got 10 seconds to go in the quarter. John Glenn leading it by two. If they put one in here, that was a huge call. We're in the lane with the left hand for two. Off the drive for two. Matt Weir. And that will end the third quarter, 34-30. John Glenn leading Dover will come back with fourth quarter John action Glenn, in a moment here on TV2 Dover, Sports. 30. The moment they hand over the keys, the day a house becomes a home, the feeling when your dream becomes a reality. These are the moments you'll remember forever. At People's Bank, our difference is providing you financial peace of mind and confidence. By asking the right questions and working with you, we earn your business. We know your family and understand your story. People's Bank, working together, building success. Tell me, are you confident in your financial game plan? Hello, I'm Matt Ferris, president of Ferris Financial. If you're like most people, you've probably spent a lot of time talking about getting your financial affairs to order, but for some reason, the game plan has never come together. At Ferris Financial, we're here to help you solidify your personal, business, and estate planning goals so that we can build a winning game plan together and help you achieve peace of mind. Please call us at 330-321-1413. Ferris Financial, helping you plan, protect, and prosper. Myers & Miller Podiatry provides complete foot and ankle care to patients of all ages. The practice was established in 2000 by Dr. Adam Myers and has grown to include Dr. Andy Miller in 2007 and most recently Dr. Jason Backage in 2010. Our core values of respect and honesty are the basis for how we manage our practice and we have grown by building relationships with our patients in order to better serve their needs. Myers & Miller Podiatry serves Tuscaroras and Holmes County with offices in Dover, Sugar Creek, Newcomerstown, and Millersburg. Let's get started building our relationship. Well, I woke up to the sound of silence in cars We're cutting like knives in a fist fight And I found you with a tear in your eye Your head in the curtains and heart like the 4th of July Said, we are not, we are not shining stars. This I know. I never said we are. If you're lost and alone, or 
The more we know you and your financial goals, the more easily we can help you achieve them. Talk to us. Find out why so many of your neighbors come by and talk with our trained loan officers. Around here, it's all about you. First National Bank of Denison, member FDIC. It's all about you. It's all about you. Tonight's sporting event is brought to you in part by Bag Sports Pub, located at 136 East Main Street in Sugar Creek. Next time you're in the Sugar Creek area, be sure to check out Bag Sports Pub, where good friends, food, and spirits come together. Bernays Italian Deli and Cafe, located at 222 Logan Street in Denison, serving the tastiest homemade food around with daily specials and to die for desserts. Bernays Italian Deli and Cafe, come for lunch and leave as a friend. Peters Tire and Auto Service, located at 135 North Water Street in downtown Eurexville. Peters Tire and Auto is a full service shop offering a wide range of automotive services and is a certified Napa Auto Care Center. Allman Incorporated. You know them as A&M Service Center, located at 1172 Tuscaroras Avenue Northwest in New Philadelphia. Tis the season. If you know your car needs servicing soon, keep in mind our holiday hours. Schedule your appointment with A&M Service Center by calling 330-343-3013 this week to help you stay on schedule for your holiday travel. Twin City Pharmacy and Gift Shop, located at 21 Grant Street in Denison. Twin City Pharmacy and Gift Shop has been in existence for over 50 years, serving not only the needs of Denison and Eurexville customers, but customers from coast to coast. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And closed on Sundays. And we're back 34 30 at the start of the fourth quarter. John Glenn leading Dover as we give you now. Our third quarter update brought to you by People's Bank, a full-service consumer and business bank located at 1309 4th Street Northwest in New Philadelphia, offering you convenient online banking, working together, building success. So good third quarter for the Tornadoes. They go in to the fourth quarter with a chance to win this game. Well, Dover pretty much dominated that fourth quarter other than the last 25 seconds, and uh, John Glenn winning by 23 the first time, only up four, but boy, that was a big Tornado momentum. Minimum uh, last couple seconds here for John Glenn scoring the last four points of the quarter to get them a four-point lead. So that is our quarter recap brought to you by People's Bank, a full-service consumer and business bank located at 1309 4th Street Northwest in New Philadelphia. Dover has the basketball to begin the quarter. John Glenn starting out in a zone here to try to take, force him to shoot the perimeter shot. Snyder over to Keith. He'll fire the three and hit it. Keith for the triple. We've been waiting on that all game, and Micah always comes up big the last few games. So it's 34-33, John Glenn. They drop it down low. Hendrickson is there. Hendrickson hits the bottom of the bank board. Dover gets the basketball a chance to take the lead with 7-12 to go. Laughlin will drive inside. Academy Award performance inside by Hendrickson. They'll go back to Contini. No good. The rebound to Rackley. Nice behind the back move into the front court. Knocked away by Snyder. Contini on the run. Laughlin to his left. Contini all the way to the hoop with the right hand for two. The 35-34 Dover. And we're going to get the offensive foul on John Glenn. Good position that time by Micah Keith. Things are starting hot and heavy here in the, in the third quarter, fourth quarter, and the 
So we're hitting a couple key baskets. So the Tornadoes with a one-point lead and the basketball. Six and a half minutes to go. The winner comes back Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock to take on the winner of the Columbus Walnut Ridge, Chillicothe Unioto. And Snyder hits three. Evan Snyder. Keep it close and you might get hot, and the Tornadoes are right now. See what John Glenn does to respond. Hendrickson. Back out. It goes to Weir. To Blatt. Now top to Slack to Rackley. Rackley has been just completely shut down here in this second half. He had 32 the first time around. Rackley with six so far as he takes it strong to the hoop. No good, tapped out. Laughlin's got it, Dover leads it by four. Stolen though. And the shot no good by Slack, gets it back. Weir falls in love with the three, it's no good. A rebound to Hendrickson. And we'll get the foul. That's going to be on Corey Contini. That'll be his fourth. That was a tough break for Corey there. A lot of loose balls going on for this first two and a half minutes of the fourth quarter. 11, Corey Contini. That's his fourth personal foul. Total of five. Tornado had a great chance. They had a four-point lead in the ball. And, and uh, just a, a little lazy pass here. And John Glenn had an opportunity to tighten it up here. So the Muskies have it, 5.24 to go. A lot of basketball to play. As Rackley runs right into Snyder, and they're going to call the foul on that, which is, I don't know, I thought Snyder's done an excellent job. That'll be his fourth foul. So now Bob Bonkettle's got a tough decision to make. That's a kind of a key there, but Snyder's just played such an outstanding game, but he did have his hands... Kind of wrapped around Racky early. Weir for three. No good. Blair the rebound. Blair's been quiet. He's got eight. See what they do if they'll go to him here maybe in this sequence. Blair has it to Snyder. Dover, I think, has got to take some time off the clock if they can. Now John Glenn came out in that zone at the start of the fourth quarter, and Micah Keith... Started things off. Snyder takes it hard to the hoop. I'll tell you what, that could have been a huge call right there. Gutsy maneuver by Snyder to do that with four fouls. Yeah, especially John Glenn setting so high up in the lane there to take the contact. But um, these guys are uh, supposedly the best official. So from our side, we thought it was a great call. Snyder, 66% free throw shooter, has five points. But both of his baskets gave Dover, I believe, a sh the lead. Well, that last uh, couple threes uh, they've hit in this quarter, Micah Keith and Evan Snyder's had a couple of them. The second free throw is short. John Glenn comes out of there with it. 4.40 to go. Fourth quarter. Exciting high school basketball action here in Athens. Hendrickson has it out top. John Glenn probably hasn't played from behind much all season. They are undefeated. Outside the three, no good. Blair the rebound. And Hendrickson will pick up that foul going over Blair's back. Yep. I guess as hot as John Glenn was that first uh, time they played, they can't buy a bucket right now. But like you said, they're sold on that three-point shot. And... and uh, Tornadoes are in good control right now. Just got to make some free throws. Only been in the line four times and made only two of them. So Corey Contini comes back in. Evan Snyder takes a seat on the bench. We get a timeout as John Glenn wants to talk about it. That'll give us a chance to tell you that our high school tournament game tonight being brought to you in part by Buffalo Wild Wings with their newest location at 1072 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Buffalo Wild Wings is the official NCAA Hangout for NCAA Sports. And Dee's Restaurant is your place for great food, great prices, and great service. Dee's is located at 1109 Bowers Avenue, Suite C in New Philadelphia, and a proud sponsor of tonight's Dover High School Basketball Tournament game. 
Coming up following our game, we'll have our Bell Stores game wrap-up. We're going to have our shot of the game, too, which at this point could be any number of shots we've seen here in this fourth quarter and also name our McDonald's MVP. A lot going on, Judd. Well, this is the point where we're going to see some free throws. Uh, Dover's got six fouls on them. The Muskies have five. And uh, neither team's shooting the ball real well from the foul line. Both are just 50 percent here in the game. So uh, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more down the stretch here as things are starting to get a little bit more heated. And, and uh, both teams are just playing hard, going after the ball. Uh, probably been some fouls that haven't been called, but uh, I have a tendency to see that referees start to tighten it up when it gets down to the last four minutes of a tight ball game. Dover with some foul trouble. Christian Randazzo into the game. Corey Contini and Evan Snyder both with four fouls. Hendrickson with four for John Glenn. Scott Robinson and Judd Compton enjoying this one here at the Convocation Center in Athens. Micah Keith brings it into the front court. Contini has it hit off his foot. What do you say about that? I don't know. Let's keep your heads, guys, and just forget that one. Okay, that was just a bad turnover there by the Tornadoes. Yeah, untimely, but let's play good let's defense to get the ball back. Yep, let's see if they can get it back here. 4.08 to go. Four-point lead for the Tornadoes. Caden Jones in the corner. Hendrickson around the horn to Blatt. Over to Rackley. You've got to think he's going to try and do something here, or wants to. He's been held to just six points. Rackley in the lane. Hard foul by Blair. Team foul number seven on the Tornadoes, but Rackley will get two free throws. Tornadoes have just done a great job to stay in front, but he's got such a quick move both right and left. That time he chose to go left and was able to get a little bit of an angle. Free throw is short. Racky, just three, just two of five from the free throw line tonight. Second free throw. Is away. And good. Rackley with seven. 38-35. With 3.41 to go. Snyder has it. Out to Keith. Keith into the lane as it kicked away, or that might have been two for Laughlin underneath. Yeah, they had a nice setup there. It looked like they were going to pull it off there. Laughlin was waiting to receive that ball. And I don't know if that was a good kick, if he's a soccer player, but uh, at least it stalled it for right now. Contini will inbounds. The basketball underneath his own basket. Into Blair. Back out to Keith. Keith in heavy traffic gets it to Contini with 3.19 to play. Winner stays alive, makes the Elite Eight. Keith over to Blair. Down near the three minute mark. The longer this goes, the Tornadoes are gaining confidence, and John Glenn's got to be. And you know, Jones will get called for the push. Their expectations were so high, 23-0. and 0, It's got to be a little tougher for them right now. That's team foul number six on John Glenn. Under three minutes to play. Dover with four timeouts remaining. John Glenn with three timeouts. Court and that's basketball. nothing you can say there except Key's feet weren't set in the front court when he grabbed the basketball. That was something we might want to take a look on the monitor, but we don't have that opportunity. But boy, that was close. If it that's was a great close call. call. Three point lead for Dover. 2.50 to go. Weir has it to Rackley. And Blair is going to be called for the foul. And that'll be a one-and-one one for the Muskies. 
second foul for number 25, Blake Blair. Eighth on the team. So the Dover Tornadoes with a slim lead as this game winds down. Heck of a job by the Tornado coaching staff to get a, the kids in a position to possibly win this game as Rackley hits the free throw. Well, you know the Dover kids, they're pretty competitive and you knew that they were going to give their best effort. And I, I got to look at everyone out there and they're some of them have been out there the whole game and still working hard. They're just going to hold it in to 42 to go. Then they can rest. Rackley's free throw is off. The rebound to Blair. Stolen away. And Weir is fouled as he goes to the hoop. Third foul on Blair. And the Dover Tornadoes want to take a timeout. And the Tornadoes are going to take a quick 30 second timeout with 2.32 to go. It's too early to name a shot of the game. You don't know, it might go right down to the wire. Well, there was a timeout with 4.22 to go. It was 38 34, and now uh, two minutes have gone by, and it's 38 36. So the Tornadoes haven't been able to score. Uh, they've had a couple key turnovers out in the top there. Uh, both teams will be going to the free throw line, including Dover, at the next time they yeah, get the, fouled. If the things do turn for the Tornadoes, turn against them, you can point to a couple of these late turnovers that have really been problematic or could be potentially problematic. Well, sometimes when you do that four corner, it gives the opportunity to the other teams to, you know, pull out and kind of trap the ball, get another hand in the passing lane. You know, you gamble that you're going to give up a... Uh, a basket underneath, but I'm not sure Dover is really looking to score, just mostly to take some time off, and let's we'll see if that comes back to hurt him. But still, well, in at the line will be Weir. Weir has 13 points, leading scorer in the game. It's up and good. Weir's been their steady scorer for John Glenn tonight. Weir, with one free throw to come here, can tie it up with 2:32 to go. And does. Tornado's with it. Trying to make a play here. Late in the game, who's going to be the hero? Scott Robinson and Jed Compton with you at the convo in Athens. Ball stolen away by Rackley. And now the momentum has kind of swung back to the Muskies. Tornado's got a little bit, I don't want to say a lazy pass, but just wasn't as open as they thought that last one. Weir to the hoop with a left Go hand. Baskets. Matt Weir. Weir's pulled that shot off about three times tonight, going down inside and flipping it back with his left hand. Minute 42 to go. Dover down by two at 40 to 38. Contini with the basketball. Carried it. And another turnover. Carried the ball. Now the Tornado is going to take another timeout, trailing by two. They're down to two timeouts. That was a crucial turnover there. Corey just trying to get something done, and uh, John Glenn's position there was pretty good and turned the other way. And that's you two know, one carries. of the things that that I asked Coach Von Kennel before the game, you know, do you coach a little bit differently in a regional game, you know, than you do in a regular season game? You know, and, and you can see his demeanor. He's really trying to encourage the kids that, uh, you know, just say, hey, we got to keep this going and, and remaining positive. And I think that's a that's a big key to this whole thing. Well, I think absolutely right now, and I think that's a good timeout because we said, we've, we've said it so much that out of these five starters, three of them haven't been out of the game, and the other two have been out a few times because of foul situations. And, you know, and, and you know when you get tired, you know your body starts to wear down. You're, you're mentally, emotionally gets down, and that's you, you know you need somebody to encourage you, find something to, hey, come on, all we need is a steal here, all we need is another stop. You know, somebody, somebody step up. Who's going to step up and make a play? And you know you just got to keep doing that. And and uh, you know it's a 23 point difference from the first time they played. You know, so we're here. We are, guys. That's where we want to be. Um, 
So maybe just a little renewed faith there in that last time out. Well, we're down to a minute 32 to go. The Muskies with a 40 to 38 lead. And they will have the basketball. An undefeated season on the line for the Muskies. Dover wants to keep it going at 23 and 2. And the Muskies go into a four corner with Weir. Contini pretty much helpless out front with four fouls. And John Glenn in the one and one every time Dover fouls. Keith comes out and they may just have to foul at some point here. Ball's knocked away, it's loose on the floor. And the Tornadoes will be called for the foul. Good, good trap that time by the Tornadoes there. They got such good quickness there with Keith and Snyder and Contini out there. And a little bit of physical play, they're letting them play. And that time, uh, somebody got their hand in there to get the steal. Great job by the Tornadoes, keeping that faith. So Corey Cantini at the line, trying to tie this game up with 59 seconds to go. First one's up and good. You can feel the pressure starting to mount here as we're in this final minute of regulation. Well, that's the kind Contini of game the makes tornadoes. the first free throw. Makes the second. And now John Glenn with 56 seconds to go. Game tied at 40. Tornadoes. Contini and Snyder playing with four fouls. Laughlin switches out on Weir. 44 seconds to go. Weir with the drive. Knocked away. Dover comes away with it and calls a quick timeout with 39 seconds to go. What I would say right now is too much dribbling by John Glenn. They just keep continuing to dribble, 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 and it gave the Tornadoes a chance to get a hand on that ball again, and Blake Blair come over and trapped it, and slapped it away, and Corey Contini with the, the recovery there. So great team defense by the Tornadoes here. Here's one of the numbers that I think this makes a difference right now. The John Glenn Muskies winning their games by an average of 30 points. They've not been in this type of pressure, pressure situation with this much on the line. Absolutely, and you know, as we mentioned, most of them are juniors on their team, so uh, the Tornadoes are pretty seasoned, uh, been through this, and uh, like you said, that was one of my goals, to keep it close, because you got a team that's won by 23 the first time, and won 23 straight, and the expectations are so high that the panic might step in a little bit here, and that time, uh, I'm not sure what Weir was trying to do. You know, he got 40 seconds, can't hold the ball to the last second, but. Hey, want to thank Omni Orthopedics, too. If you've been sidelined with an injury, get back into the game of the home team at Omni Orthopedics, our scoreboard sponsor all season long. Thanks to the great folks at Omni Orthopedics. So what'd you drop in the huddle? Well, the Tornadoes, I'm sure they are. 40 seconds to go. Uh, they're going to hold the last second shot, and they'll run some, some kind of a curl move, try to get Blair open in the corner. Uh, I'd get it in his hands, uh, and if he doesn't have it, you can have Laughlin down on the block. But you got capable shooters, Micah Keith. You know, he had a big three, so they got a lot of options, but I would hold it to the last shot and try to get Blair a look. He's so strong with the ball. Contini will get it into Blair. He'll get it back with 38 seconds to go. These athletes have waited their entire high school career for this moment. 30 seconds to go. Regional semi final game tied at 40 Dover with a basketball. Will they take a timeout here as they get down to about 10 to 12 seconds? At this point, I would say no, because John Glenn's just kind of letting them stay off. And down to 16 seconds. You've got to think they want to go inside if they can, but Laughlin pops out with 10. Laughlin takes it into the lane, and he is going to be called for the travel. <laughs> and now with six seconds to go, Let's see if John Glenn will take a timeout. Tornadoes had a good plan. It might have been a little bit high out there for Laughlin uh, starting at the three-point shot, but uh, they had a good plan. Full timeout. So now John Glenn takes the full timeout with six and a half seconds to go and a chance to win the game in regulation. 
Well, so my, if you're John Glenn, you got to go the full length of the floor, but they've got some athletes, and you've got to think Weir or Rackley are the two guys they want to have the basketball. Well, for John Glenn, a couple things. they got to wait for the last shot somehow because the Tornadoes are in foul trouble if they go to overtime. I mean, all the advantages are for the John Glenn if they miss it or make it. But, uh, you know, Racky's my choice. And although he's only had 10 points, he has a way to get his shot off and can handle the ball. But uh, Dover does a good job of uh, collapsing and uh, trapping the ball in these situations. And if John Glenn can pass the ball, they might have a better chance of getting a good shot, but if they're going to try and just dribble it. Well, you know, the Dover's got to be careful, too, on the inbounds play because John Glenn is in the one-on-one. -on -one. As we right. take another look there, and uh, the replay showing that uh, not sure. I thought that on that replay that Laughlin made contact and got his feet back set. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, yeah. that's not too sure about that. But uh, six and a half seconds to go. I'm sure Dover's going to keep it in front and make them use the dribble up to get up. But tough spot for the Tornadoes here, tied at 40. How good would a steal look here? Into Weir, across the timeline, to the hoop, the shot, no good, the tip up, no good, the rebound, falls short. And we go to overtime. So as we get ready to go to overtime, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more in a moment from Athens. 40-40, John Glenn and Dover headed into extra periods on TV2 Sports. Government officials, business leaders, volunteers, and much more. You'll hear it all here on TV2 Profiles, exclusively on TV2. Hi, I'm your host, Cheyenne Carroll, and join me as I interview the Tuscarawas Valley's leading women. You can visit WJERTV2.com for show episodes and details. In the nation, it's not always pretty, but add brand new belongings from Nationwide Insurance and we'll replace destroyed or stolen items with brand new versions. We take care of the heat so you don't get burned. Just another way we put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. You can create a lasting legacy with a gift to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation. It provides a safe, trustworthy, philanthropic choice for your estate planning needs. Through the generosity of area residents, the foundation has been able to provide nearly $5 million in funding for a variety of community projects and student scholarships that have positively impacted each corner of our county. Help your community by making a tax-deductible donation to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation today. Omni Orthopedics comprehensive programs provide early diagnosis and successful treatment for every musculoskeletal problem. With more than 30 years of orthopedic experience, their physicians offer patient-centered treatment for all ages. From evaluation to rehabilitation, your treatment plan is designed around your needs. Omni Orthopedics specializes in sports medicine, the spine, physical medicine and rehabilitation, foot and ankle, and hand surgery. If pain makes activities like climbing stairs, standing or walking a challenge, turn to the home team at Omni Orthopedics. Their mission is to provide you with the highest quality and most advanced orthopedic services so you can get back in the game. Located in the Oxford Medical Arts Building, Omni offers a full service facility including digital x-ray and physical therapy. So there's no need to travel when quality care is so close to home. I'm the Orthopedics, setting the standard in orthopedic care. Hi, I'm Elaine Miller with Naturally Green Cleaning Service. My company serves both commercial and residential clients. We do general cleaning, spring and fall, empty homes to get them move-in ready, and final cleans for new construction. We use eco-friendly cleaning products that leave your home or office fresh, clean, and safe for you, 
your family, pets, or coworkers. Our focus at Naturally Green is to provide excellent customer service paired with outstanding work to build a relationship of trust with you, our clients. Having served the area four plus years, we have had many referrals and testimonials that you can access on our website at www.naturallygreencs.com. Our work sells itself, therefore we have never had any contracts even with our largest commercial accounts. Call us today for your free quote and see what makes our company stand out. And we're underway here at the Ohio University Convocation Center. John Glenn with the basketball to start the first overtime. Rackley into the lane with the right hand leaning left has two. It's Rasky's first basket since the first quarter. So the Tornado's really up against it here. Snyder and Cantini with four fouls. Blair with three. Both teams in the one and one. And the Tornado's now trailing with 3.14 to go in overtime. Blair, the elbow, the jumper, just off the front of the rim, the rebound to Rackley. Rackley will hold up to Weir over to Slack, and he walked with it. So, boy, crucial turnovers for both teams uh, late in this contest. Yep, that was a big one there for John Glenn if uh, Slack could have hit that three, but... Good turnover for the Tornadoes. Luck, and let's uh, keep it going here and see if we can get another good shot. Blair just missed the last one. Had a nice look at an elbow jumper. See if we can get another one. 42-40. John Glenn with the lead over Dover. Blair has it. Snyder to Blair to Contini. Tornadoes trying to get to the Elite Eight, having lost to John Glenn in the same game last year. Two and a half minutes remain in the first overtime. Contini, foul line, got it! Pull up for the deuce. Ties it up. Contini. Contini with 12, and we're tied at 42. We've seen that shot over the last few years, and boy, a great time for Corey to get that jumper. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the Muskies. That's part of the offense I think that's been missing a little bit with the Tornadoes is that 15-footer from Corey Contini. We'll see if he lights the fire under that one here. In the overtime, he's got one already. Weir shot, no good. Can't get the rebound, falls out to Rackley. Rackley in trouble to Weir. Over to Blatt for three, got it. Trifecta, Austin Blatt. I believe that's Blatt's first points of the game, a three-point shot there is a big lift for the little Muskies here with 1.42 to go. Both teams with timeouts remaining. Katini has it, minute 33 to go, Dover trailing by three. Snyder out to Keith. This is where the fun begins, a minute 23 to go. Good thing Corey Cantini's a wide receiver. <laughs> Got skills in a lot of areas. Laughlin out top. Needs some help. Keith comes to him with a minute seven. Blair over to Cantini. Dover being patient. Good thing. One minute, minute to go. One minute Cantini in, in the lane. Short jumper for two. Cantini for two. Corey Cantini having a good second half on the offensive end here. Got 15 points now. Forty-five, forty-four. Thirty-nine seconds to go. Time John out. Glenn with the one-point lead. Thirty-second timeout. Taken by John Glenn. Well, it's down to the final thirty-nine seconds. Well, it's not quite as similar as the first uh, in the fourth quarter because teams were tied and they were, you know, they could hold the ball without being worried about fouls. The Tornadoes would probably come out and try to look at their trap off the first pass and see if they can sneak a, a steal here. Uh, John Glenn obviously are going to try and keep the ball and 
They so don't need to shoot, but they will. Some, uh, some game we've seen here. Pulling for the Tornadoes, obviously, as we head into this final 39 seconds. We'll have our Bell Stores game wrap up. We'll have our shot of the game brought to you by People's Bank. And we'll also name our McDonald's player of the game. That's all coming up here very shortly. I'm sure the Tornadoes will probably look for, you know, the first 15 seconds or so to try and see if we can get a hand on the ball or see if we can get a steal or something. To, well, know. here's something else, too. If Dover fouls John Glenn in a non-shooting situation, we're in the double bonus for them. Although John Glenn has not shot the ball well from the free throw line. We have a five-second call. Nope, but we'll get the timeout. So they're forced to waste a critical timeout here, leaving them just one. Full timeout. Well, good pressure there by the Tornadoes there. You know, looks like John Glenn's going to have to do picking away from the ball or something to try and get it in, but the Tornadoes uh, do a good job of switching if they have to and, and just denying that and trying to get that five-second count, and uh, John Glenn, uh, you know, melts away one of their timeouts at this point. You know, it's one of those things where it's, it's such a huge moment for all the Dover seniors. I mean, this is, this is it. This is what they worked for all through their high school career, and now it's down to 39 seconds left, and who's going to step up and who's going to make a play? Well, when you got eight, eight, your first eight seniors are your players here, and, uh, you know, pretty much the five starters have played most of the game. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? You, hey, you guys have been here. This is your year. They're, you know, coach has put it in their hands. He's given a few things to, hey, let's try to do this and this, but it still comes down to athletic ability. And, and uh, Corey Contini showed that the last couple of times down the floor with a couple of jumpers. Well, both teams break the huddle with 39 seconds to go. Dover with two timeouts remaining. John Glenn with one. Scott Robinson and Jed Compton enjoying this one from Athens. Looks like John Glenn's going to set a little different set, try to get a screen away deeper, have somebody come to the ball. And it's in the hands of Rackley with 37 seconds to go. To Blatt, to Slack. A game of keep away at this point. And Laughlin slides over to make the foul. No choice there. He needed to do that. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. But Rackley uh, pretty strong with the ball that time, taking it through the hoop. Coach Woodwork must have some uh, faith in uh, having the ball in Rackley's hand and letting him do that with 27 to seconds to go. But. Rackley has not had a particularly good night at the free throw line. Nope, he's uh, four of eight. Free throw is up and good. Rackley with 11. If Rackley, Rackley makes this, they've been doing a good job of denying the Dover the three-point shot. So. So the Crucial play has already rebound. been called by the Dover bench, and Rackley hits. Rackley with 12. You've got to think they want Blair to take a three-pointer here. He's wide open on the far side, but Rackley's covering him. Down to 14 seconds. Dover down by three, and the Tornadoes are going to have to take a timeout, timeout. with 11 seconds to go. So now... They pretty much don't have Full a choice other than maybe shoot a three-pointer. Well, Bob's got a, a couple of nice plays that they can set up. You know, sometimes you can throw it in from the, the guy taking a ball out and throw it back to him. Sometime he's open. Uh, they might look for that, and, and, and they uh, have a play where they double screen on the backside. Uh, with 11 seconds, you're going to have to run that pretty quickly. Uh, they might try to set that up for Blair to get open, and um, I think somebody's going to have to make a three-pointer with a hand in their face. Um, at this well, point. you've got to think that, uh, that that's probably their best bet at this stage, although they could, you know, go for the two and foul. But there again, the Muskies got to get two free throws with the double bonus every time Dover fouls them. Yeah, if you're going to go inside, you got to do it pretty quick. And uh, um, I'm like you. I, at this point in the game, you got to try and get a three-pointer. Do it early and try if you can get an offensive board and get a second shot. Well, at this point, you've got to try to get to the second overtime because you've got foul trouble, you've got everything else going on, so you give yourself another chance. Re-rack it and start over again if you can. 
Well, Austin Laughlin has not shot a three-pointer all night, so the other four are pretty good shooters, so they've got some options here. Now, Contini is going to inbound it from the far side. 11 seconds to go here in overtime. Look for it coming back to... They'll inbound it to Keith. And we get a quick foul. So that'll put Dober at the line. Kind of an interesting tactic here. This is the old debate whether you... In college a lot, they talk about whether you give them two with eight seconds to go. I'm not sure I would do that. I think I'd take my chances of going into overtime. At worst, you were going to end up in a situation where they would tie it. You know, this situation, if Dover gets a steal off an inbounds play, makes one, you know, there's a lot of different scenarios. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of time left. And Mike uh, hits them both. Well, Tyler Brass and Christian Randazza are in there as their designated foulers. You can see yeah. that already. With 8.8 .8 seconds to go, Micah Keith goes to the line. 59% free throw shooter. First one is up and good. Good job by Micah. Mike has been steady all year for the Tornadoes. And big free throw there. So he'll have a second free throw here. It's up and short. The rebound to Rackley, and Laughlin will foul him. Now the problem for the Tornadoes, two free throws here, and it does not look foul charge number 20 on too good. Line. So the Tornadoes have got yes, to hope. Sir that uh, Rackley, probably their best free throw shooter, struggles again. Yeah, he made his last two, but uh, at the line. if he Double does miss, bonus. Tornado's got to get the board, and they've got a timeout here if they need to use it. First free throw is up and good. Really comes down to this shot. This could be the season here for the Tornadoes. John Glenn could still foul one more time with a one and one if they choose to. But it, with four point lead, four point I don't think he probably, yeah. if, if he makes it here and does. Rackley with 14. And now at the other end, that is going to do it, I believe. And the game is over, 49-45. The final score. John Glenn. John Glenn, 49. Dover, wins it in overtime here at the Convocation the Center. Combo. Let's go to our shot of the game, brought to you by People's Bank, a full-service consumer Dover business man, bank, nice located at 1309 4th Street seniors. Northwest in New Philadelphia, offering you convenient online Pressure banking, Rondazzo. working together, Blake building Blair. success. And really, you, you have to go clear back to the point where they were trailing. And Micah Keith hit that three-pointer. I think clear back there, you had a couple of big shots along the way by Evan Snyder as well. So we're going to give a couple of shots in the game that uh, really helped the Tornadoes uh, take it to overtime and almost win this Sweet 16 contest. So those are our shots of the game brought to you by People's Bank, a full-service consumer and business bank located at 1309 4th Street Northwest in New Philadelphia. We'll come back with our game wrap-up and also name our McDonald's player of the game. That's all coming up shortly here on TV2 Sports. Hi, I'm Elaine Miller with Naturally Green Cleaning Service. My company serves both commercial and residential clients. We do general cleaning, spring and fall, empty homes to get them move-in ready, and final cleans for new construction. We use eco-friendly cleaning products that leave your home or office fresh, clean, and safe for you, your family, pets, or coworkers. Our focus at Naturally Green is to provide excellent customer service paired with outstanding work to build a relationship of trust with you, our clients. Having served the area four plus years, we have had many referrals and testimonials that you can access on our website at www.naturallygreencs.com. Our work sells itself, therefore we have never had any contracts even with our largest commercial accounts. Call us today for your free quote and see what makes our company stand out. As the area's leader in direct-to-garment printing, you won't be surprised by Denison T-Shirt Graphics' huge range of services, screen printing, banners, engraving, graphic design, and embroidery. 
They offer just about anything you can imagine, like shirts, mugs, hats, plaques, trophies, and more. They're located right here in New Philadelphia on the south side and on the web at denisontshirt.com. Hi, I'm Paula Salzner, real estate professional with Kaufman Realty and Auctions. I'd like to invite you to watch Paula's Real Estate Corner here on Channel TV 2 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 o'clock. You will see some amazing properties here in Tuscarawas County and surrounding. Be sure to watch only on TV2. And it's time now for our game recap brought to you by Bell Stores with two new convenient locations to better serve you in Sugar Creek and Walnut Creek. Wrap up your day by stopping in at your local convenient Bell Store and make sure your family is running on full. What a game. What a season for the Dover Tornadoes. But they come up a little bit short at 49-45 in overtime to John Glenn. And uh, John Glenn sweeping the, uh, I guess, the season series, if you will, uh, tonight in a battle here in the Sweet 16 game at the Convocation Center in Athens. So, Judd, let's take it away and take a look at some of these statistics. All right, for the... Uh Tornadoes tonight, 18 of 37 from the field uh, for 49%. They shot very well, moved the ball around pretty good, and had a lot of, a lot of help from uh, all five players. Uh, free throws, 5 of 8 for 63%. For John Glenn, uh, 16 of 37, 43%. They had a tough night shooting uh, thanks to the Dover defense doing a great job keeping the game close. Uh, free throws, 12 of 18 for 67%. Uh, but Drew Rackley 4-4 four four down the stretch in overtime was a big uh, component to that win. Rebounding totals, the Tornadoes did a great job on the boards. 24 tonight compared to 15 for John Glenn. And turnovers, the only thing that might have hurt the Tornadoes here at the end. They had a couple of tough turnovers late in the game. They ended up with 15 with John Glenn with only 9. Uh, Blake Blair with 8 points tonight. Austin Laughlin with 8. Evan Snyder with 8. Micah Keith with 5. And the last... Uh, Game for these seniors leading the score tonight, Corey Contini with 15. And for John Glenn, Matt Weir with 17, and Drew Rackley with 14 leading the win. So let's also say congratulations on great careers for the following seniors for Dover. Blake Blair, Corey Contini, Evan Snyder, Austin Laughlin, Micah Keith, Christian Randazzo. We've got Callahan Ross and also Tyler Brass. What a career for them as they get to the regionals two straight years to close out their high school career under head coach Bob Bond Kennel. That is our Bell Stores game wrap-up brought to you by Bell Stores with two new convenient locations to better serve you in Sugar Creek and Walnut Creek. Wrap up your day by stopping in at your local convenient Bell Store. Make sure your family is running on full. It's time now for our MVP brought to you by McDonald's with nine locations to serve you in Bolivar, Strasburg, Dover, Yorksville, Newcomers Town, Caddis, Sugar Creek, and two locations in New Philadelphia. Because of his defensive effort on Drew Rackley and also some key shots, we're going to name Evan Snyder our player of the game, brought to you by McDonald's, with nine locations to serve you in Bolivar, Strasburg, Dover, Yorksville, Newcomers Town, Caddis, Sugar Creek, and two locations in New Philadelphia. That's going to do it here from Athens. The Dover Tornadoes see their season come to an end at 23-3. and uh, in overtime in the Sweet 16 Regional Semifinal in Division Two here at the Convocation Center in Athens. For Judd Compton and the rest of our TV2 sports team, I'm Scott Robinson. Thanks so long, everybody.